Pie dough at its core is flour, fat, and water. Anything after that is for flavoring or coloring. A flaky crust is a result of moisture content in the dough evaporating quickly, creating steam, and separating layers. That leaves the dough flaky and crispy and tender. Now, when we made fish and chips, we learned that vodka evaporates quicker than water does, creating a crisp and tender batter. The same happens in a pie dough. Now, gluten is an enemy of pie doughs. So if we replace a little bit of the water with a little bit of vodka, that's gonna help bind the flour and the fat without developing a lot of gluten in it. And then as it cooks, that vodka will evaporate quickly, leaving behind a beautifully flaky and crispy crust. And then playing around a little bit with the types of fats we use, we're going to create a beautiful pie crust. Thanks to our sponsor today, Bespoke Post, but more on them later. For now, let's just jump right into it. Now, I've showed you my family's pie dough recipe, but we weren't happy with it, so my mom and I have been improving, which is what this year's theme is all about, improving family recipes. So we did some work on it, as you can see. We marked up the original recipe, and I've made my notes. My mom added three different fats. I added the vodka. I kind of dialed in her recipe a little bit, and this is what we landed on. I've got butter, shortening, and lard. And they are gonna be sitting in the refrigerator, chilling, staying very cold. If you just came back from the grocery store, pop them in the freezer and get them nice and tight. And we're only gonna take them out of the fridge as soon as we need them. This recipe is gonna start in the food processor. I've added the little dough cutter in here. We're gonna measure out two and a half cups of flour. Now if you wanna be super accurate, I believe it's 12 and a half ounces. If you're not measuring, you wanna spoon in the flour into the measuring cup and then level it off with a knife. Then add a few hefty tablespoons of salt for the, bring out that flavor. Two and a half tablespoons of sugar, which isn't necessarily for sweetness, it's to help the dough brown a little bit. I'm just gonna pulse it to get everything incorporated. Now I'm gonna start to add the fats. I'm gonna add them a little bit at a time just to get them incorporated. The first fat's gonna be eight tablespoons of cubed unsalted butter. Now you may ask yourself why the trio of fats? Well, butter has great flavor and a higher moisture content, but it, when cold, it's firm and harder to work with the dough. Next, we have four tablespoons of lard, which has great flavor and creates flaky, crispy doughs, but doesn't provide the structure that butter or shortening does. Then we have a half cup of shortening, which has the highest melting point and keeps the dough's shape and structure best, but lacks the flavor of butter and lard. So the combination kind of gets us where we want. The dough should begin to look like a wet sand, and when you grab it and squeeze the dough together, it should be moist enough to form little balls. At that stage, you wanna pour the dough into a bowl where we can start to work in a little bit of the liquid. Another thing I've been keeping cold, ice cold is a quarter cup of water and a quarter cup of that vodka. And in the bowl, I'm just gonna start to incorporate some of this liquid into the dough. I'm gonna sort of use a spatula to fold that dough onto itself until it just comes together into a ball. A little vodka and a little bit of the water. Now that looks moist enough and I still have some vodka and water left. You don't have to add it all. Throw a little flour on your work surface. Then turn the dough out onto the board and instead of kneading, fold the dough onto itself until it kind of forms into a cohesive ball. And then start to roll it out. Adding flour as soon as you see any sort of sticking happening. Just roll it out into like a big circle. Always try and roll from the center out so that you're not developing gluten in the pie crust. And then cut that into four quadrants and stack those on top of each other. This laminating is sort of gonna help create nice flaky layers when the pie bakes. Then roll that back out a little bit more and then fold it onto itself, sort of laminate it one more time. Then cut that dough in half so you have a bottom piece of dough and a top piece of dough. I like to use a nine inch glass pie plate so I can see the underneath baking with these short walls. Smaller pie plates are gonna bake a little bit better in my opinion than larger ones. Then we want to roll out the bottom dough, adding flour as needed, a little larger than the nine inch pan so there is some overhang so that the bottom dough is larger than the top piece of dough. And then fold that dough into a triangle to allow you to transfer it to the pie plate easily. And use your hand to go around the dough and make sure there's no air gap between the pie plate and the dough. 
You want that dough to make contact with the glass. Then take some kitchen shears and clean up the edges. We want some overhang because we want the bottom dough to be larger than the top dough. So don't cut too much, but just clean it up and then pop that in the fridge while you roll out the top dough. Not quite as large as the bottom dough, but once we get to a certain size that we think is about the size it should be, we're gonna transfer it to parchment paper, place that on a sheet tray, and then place that into the refrigerator so we don't have to worry about rolling the doughs out when they're they're nice and chilled we can just roll them out and then chill them and it's gonna be a lot easier than trying to work with everything when it's super cold now both of these doughs are gonna chill and rest in the fridge for two hours doughs have been chilling in there for about an hour and a half so it's about time to start prepping the apples now I have here a bag of Macintosh apples this is around four pounds of apples I've made this with golden delicious apples. That works fine. They're, after all the apples that I've tried, it seems like the Macintosh is my favorite. Some places say Macintoshes aren't good apples for apple pie, but my mom and I like them. So we're gonna use them, but you can use golden delicious. You can use whatever you'd like, or you can just use Macintosh like we did. So first we just need to peel them. And what we wanna go for is about three pounds of peeled sliced apples that are gonna go into the biggest bowl that you have. So, and that might not be this whole bag. So take out all the apples. I'll see which ones are the most bruised and save those for last and use them only if I need to. See, like this one, super bruised. So I like to get all the apples onto the table and then a little bit of parchment paper so that I can just go through, peel all the apples and have that peel just land right on the parchment paper so I can just pick it up easily and throw it in the trash and get to cutting the apples. And I wanna cut the apples into fours, just going around and cutting around the core of the apple. And then we wanna take those and cut them into like maybe like a half inch thick slice. They will shrink as they cook, so you don't want them to be like paper thin. But I also don't want huge thick pieces of apple in the pot. I kinda like to line them up like a train so that I could bang through slicing the apples really quickly. Two point eight pounds, close enough to three pounds for me. And we got our apple slice, and it's time for the spices and all the good stuff. One other addition we're adding is a little squeeze of lemon juice. All I want is just really like a tiny cheek, just this little bit right here. You're not really gonna taste lemon, but you're gonna get a little something in the back of your throat that sort of elevates a lot of the other flavors. So just a tad. That's it. I'm no more. Give it a toss. Then you need a little bit of flour. Don't need to be very precise here. It's gonna go about four tablespoons. Then just give that a mix to get the apples coated in that flour. A few big pinches of salt. Then you wanna go in with a half cup of packed dark brown sugar, and then three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. And then three to four tablespoons or a quarter cup of cinnamon that I'm going to add most of at first. And maybe if you don't love cinnamon, ease into it. But my family loves cinnamon. And after tasting a few of the apples, I end up realizing I want the whole quarter cup. And just mix that up really well. Make sure that spatula gets to the bottom of the bowl to get anything that may have settled to the bottom. As is, this is how we normally make it. But because I have some, do you remember the caramel apple video we made earlier this month? I still have a lot of caramel left over. Seems like a pretty good idea to add a little bit of the caramel to the apple filling, if I have some. So if you wanna take this recipe and level it up to a caramel apple pie, just gonna reheat this a little bit up and add a little bit to it. I just popped it in the microwave for like two minutes, got it soft again, and then incorporated a couple tablespoons into the mix, and then just mixed it all together. Then we can take the pie crust out of the fridge, and I like to spoon that bottom layer on the bottom crust to make sure that there's no gaps. Sometimes the pie will collapse because you didn't properly pack the pie with apples. So I'm gonna be very careful about packing it, and I'm gonna dot with some butter, and then get that top dough out of the refrigerator, and then just place it right on top of the pie. Then take those scissors and we're gonna cut the top dough just slightly smaller than the bottom dough and then start to curl the bottom dough over the top to seal the pie together. Then I just like to make this little pattern around the edges to make it look nice. Then I cut four slits into the top of the pie and what I forgot to do because I was rushing is chill this again one last time for 30 minutes before baking. My nice design didn't hold its shape because I forgot to chill it again. Then I just take some aluminum foil and create a little protective rim around the edge of the crust so it doesn't get too dark, which I will take off halfway through cooking. 
Then I'm gonna get that into a 375 degree oven on the bottom rack for one hour and 15 minutes, but I may cook it longer. Now that that's in the oven, it gives us a second to thank our sponsor today, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands directly to you every month. The membership is free to join. And as a member, you just take a quiz that determines your preferences, the things that you like. And based on those preferences, you'll get a box assigned to you. And before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what comes inside. So you can decide if you'd like to keep it, swap it for a different box, or skip that month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want, and the box lineup is constantly changing every month. After setting my preferences, I got the gadget, which comes with this handy multi-tool. Any cool tool that will help around the house, I always like to have on hand. I also got the Alchemy, which is all the gear you need to make great cocktails at home. Next box I got was the Echo, which comes with a DIY hot sauce kit, a taco stand, and an artisan-made mocajete, which is a really awesome thing to get and something I needed. And last but not least, I got this beautifully large, great quality canvas weekend bag. So instead of bringing a backpack, I can travel like an adult. And what's great is that each box retails for $70, but only costs you 45. And with the holidays around the corner, that's a great deal for something that makes a great gift. And thankfully, Bespoke Post is giving my viewers 20% off their first box. Just click the link in the description and enter the code NACS20 at checkout or go to bspk.me backslash NACS20. After about 45 minutes, I check the pie and remove the aluminum foil and get that back in the oven so I can start to develop nice color around the pie. Then after an hour and 15 minutes, the pie is nice and bubbly and the apples inside are cooked, but it still needs more color. So I'm gonna jack the heat up to 400 and cook it for 15 more minutes until it's nicely browned around the edges and get it out of the oven to cool. So it's about nine o'clock. I'm gonna leave this out all night to cool completely. We'll check back in the morning, cut this bad boy open and see how we did. The next day, it's ready to cut into. So first we can just admire our work. We've got this beautiful crust. It's a rustic, it's got the caramel dripping out, which I like. You can see the edges are cooked and we can check the underneath and see that that's cooked as well. And when we cut into it, we can see the flaky layers around the edges of the crust. As we pull the apple pie out of the pie dish, everything holds together. You can get a beautiful slice that stands on its own. Mission accomplished. The crust is salty, it has flavor. It's crispy, but it's still tender. This pie crust puts my last pie crust to shame. It's a beautiful thing. Mm. For this recipe and all my holiday recipes, you can grab the ebook version of this with the all access pass to my website with exclusive content for the holidays in the link down in the description. Otherwise, that's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. More Thanksgiving recipes, I got four more on the screen, like this really easy beginner upside down turkey. It's perfect for any skill level and it's pretty much gonna guarantee as good of a whole turkey as possible.